so good afternoon kelvin and uh, today we will be talking about more about database and uh, today we will see the difference between computerized and uh, manual database system and what are the different components of dbms types of dbms right and we will learn how to create database using microsoft access so let's start with the the difference between manual and a computerized uh, data maintenance system so uh, tell me if you see you know if we talk about manual data management system what we do in a manual system uh, we maintain a file we maintain a file and in the in, in the file we keep different papers different folders and we keep all information in the files and you 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 see you know m bunch of files are there in the government offices or in the <coughs> in in many organization who deal with the physical system yeah. so there are some limitations of physical system manual system because it it require intense labor to search any kind of information let's say you have ample number of uh, files so you need to have a proper space to place those files in a cabinet also you need someone to keep uh, you know watch on the files so, so that you can protect your information and uh, it becomes tedious you know when you have to pull out or search some data so what we do here uh, you know in a computerized system we make it easy we make it easy we we make it as a computerized system so that any time we can access uh, any information in a in a fraction of a second right so uh, let, let's see on the screen you know you have different uh, parameters here on the basis uh, of what we are going to make comparison between manual and a computerized uh, data system uh, the first uh, parameter is size so if you see you know in a in ma manual system you you need a you know proper amount of space to place your files and folders right and when we talk about computer system you know it has a vast amount of data you can store in a, in a small a flash drive or a small memory card or a hard disk it's easy right next we talk about speed if somebody asks to pull out certain record out of the physical files so it becomes some tedious task or you need a you know high amount of labor to search for a file and then pull out the specific information right but if it's a computerized system then you can easily pull it uh, you know with a single click right uh, similarly we have data analysis if if your manager asks or if your officer asks to prepare a report right if, if your manager says please prepare a report out of that uh, you know uh, data so in, in a physical system it becomes very difficult you know to see and go through all the files then gather all, all information and then prepare a report but in a computerized system you know you it's become easy because you have tables you have data there you can easily pull out data and prepare different charts and perform analysis right and we now we have Sean online Sean are you there Yes, sir. I'm here. So uh, next, we have update record. Uh, you know, sometimes we have to update uh, any specific entry in a database, uh, and if we are maintaining a physical system, then you know we have to go and look for a specific page, then look for a specific information, then make an entry in that or update any information if let's say example of a customer customer wants to update his phone number so first you do you open his file then you look for his record then you look for his you know entry for a phone number then you will update the entry and delete the previous entry so you just scribble it out you cannot remove it you scribble it out and you make a new entry but in a computerized system it's very easy to update any record also you can uh, you know maintain a track of previous uh, record right so you can make record a uh, track of the items that you deleted before 
now what is the new item so you have a log of everything so in in computer system everything is being recorded you know whenever you click uh, on any item in the computer it is being logged right is this clear to you sean uh, yes sir all right uh, so next we have data sorting and data sorting is a tedious task uh, in in a physical system because you you need to identify a specific criteria to sort your data i want all data to be sorted out on the basis of uh, you know customers uh, uh, investment in the company so it becomes uh, difficult in a physical system you will first look for the customer then look for his investment then you sort it out accordingly but in a computerized system you can do it in a single click you can arrange it you know on the specific condition right similarly you can perform ascending and descending criteria right yes yes say say let's say i i want uh, my record to be uh, sorted in ascending order or a descending order so in a physical system you have to identify all the files then you have to place them as per the alphabets then only you will sort it it require manual labor but in a computerized system it will not take much time you just perform a single click your data is sorted right uh yes, sir if you find any difficulty to understand please uh, you know ask again the same point yes, right yes, okay next we talk about uh, you know the safety point uh, uh, the records can be lost or misfiled uh, you know if we are maintaining a physical system it might be possible that you lose some information in a physical because you have to maintain files you have to place them properly you have to put it them in a in a locker or a key somewhere so that you can make it safe but in a computerized system it is very very easy to make it safe you can lock it with the password right and you can put it on the you know somewhere in a, a encrypted in encrypted form you can put your data in an encrypted form and you can retrieve it when you need it so it's a more more secure than a physical uh, file storage system next we talk about uh, you know uh, the security and the same thing safety and security you know and if we say safety then you have to uh, you know appoint somebody as a security person or in charge of a almira or a, or, a, or a cupboard to you know keep keep record of the items who is taking the key you know who is uh, you know taking the files out of the you know almira or the cabinet right is this clear to you uh shan yes sir yes sir All right so let's move on uh, next we talk about different components of dbms so uh, shan first tell me what do you understand by the term component uh, component basically it's part of that database uh different uh, we can say component is uh keyboard mouse uh huh and and so on yes yes so in the database it would have your hardware software uh, -huh. uh and so on absolutely absolutely uh telvin is it clear to you oh yeah 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 okay 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 so what what he is saying right now he is saying you know component basically you know take an example of a computer system so a, one one desktop machine has different component it has a keyboard it has a mouse it has a cpu it has a monitor so these are different components that makes a entire desktop machine right so uh, similarly in a in a database management system we have different components you know uh, that that makes a uh, that makes a complete system so let let's start uh, you know one by one uh, first we have a software component so software component basically is, is, is in a, you know is a kind of program or uh, you know kind of uh, you know algorithm that is designed to manage uh, your database management system that software needs to be installed on your computer machine so if you have a software then only you can interact uh, with the 
database uh, management system you know if you have a bare metal hardware how you will speak with a bare metal hardware uh sean pardon me how how would you speak to the bare metal hardware yes yes by uh, basically input devices yes so you because you, need, you would need to input you would need to input something so that uh, a uh, hardware would actually give it yes yeah. so my point is that you know uh, similarly you know to interact with any system or any any kind of hardware you need a piece of uh, you know input in the form of uh, you know kind of signals or you need a kind of software or a driver to interact with the hardware right yeah uh, is this clear to you sean yes sir right so in a database management system we need a software to be installed on the machine it could be your local machine it could be your you know high end server where your data is getting stored so you need to install a software so software is one of the component of a database management system right like in our case you know the software we are using it here is microsoft access do you understand so microsoft access yes, sir. you need to install on our machine to deal with the database right and the next thing is is the hardware so hardware is also very important because you know software cannot run its own uh, software needs to be installed on some machine it needs to be configured on a particular device so we need a hardware we need a computer or we need a desktop machine or a server but now people are moving to a cloud so you need a cloud platform where you need to configure your software database software so you need a software and you need a hardware to make uh, you know this is functional right sean yes sir yes sir so uh, yes, sir. Ne next thing is our data and data is very crucial thing here and without data there is no use of a database uh, system and data is the key component in the database management system without data you don't uh, need a concept of a database so data is very crucial you need a software you need a hardware then you have need, then you have to store data with the help of software right right next we yes, have sir. a procedure procedure uh, tells us you know how you have to store data you cannot store data as it is you you need to create database then you need to create tables then you need to you know create different columns so the fields you have to set certain conditions on it then you have to uh, you know feed your data so there are certain procedures that you have to follow to store your data in a database management system right yes yes so procedure tells us the way that how how you can you know store your data in a database so procedure tells that first you have to identify the purpose for a database then you create your database then you create your tables then you create a different columns in the table then you set different conditions identify your primary key and then store your data so these are different procedures uh, you have to follow this is the one of the component in a database management system procedure tells the way how to store data in a database system is this clear to you Sean yes sir, yes, sir. right uh, next we have a database access language database access language you know let's take an example of a computer machine as we know that computer can understand uh, only the binary language computer can understand only the language of 0 and 1 so similarly on hardware on a computer we install a software that is called operating system so operating system acts as a interface between your computer and you so interface is the operating system that works between a hardware and a and a end user and a end user yes so similarly to interact with a database you know you need a language of a database you need you know certain certain kind of uh, things to understand database uh, you know point how you will interact with database you should you should know the database language right you should know the database uh, language so how how you will uh, uh, you know execute your uh, your your points 
what do you need you need to write certain queries right you need to type sql commands that is a database language you write select star from so and so table or select a, a, you know particular column from this table so you writing a database language because database will understand this sql commands right sean yes sir right so database access language is basically the queries you write it sir yes telvin um, um that is like um, for example command prompt uh, yes command prompt you know is is the way of uh, again command prompt is a different thing command prompt is talking about operating system so you have certain things that you can do with the graphical interface and the same things you can perform with the help of command prompt but maybe here, you can use a compiler yes 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 so here i'm talking about you know kind of language to interact with the database that language is uh, sql called structured query language uh, if you remember that we have run uh, certain queries in ms access and uh, there was a question on uh, uh, you know in in exam where you have to retrieve some data from your database and you have to write sql queries so sql is basically is the language that we use to interact with the database system yeah. right so yeah, the, the the example you are saying is a command prompt command prompt is you know is another way of doing things uh, you know you write your command you know i want to close a window i will not use my mouse to close the window i'll just type the close option in the command prompt and it will close the window for me yeah. right so database access language is a language basically used to interact with the database system next uh, we have query processor query processor uh, you know uh, when you have a query then you need somebody to compile your query now the shawn your points comes here about compiler right yes so you need somebody who can translate your query into a language that computer can understand so you need a kind of processor who will understand what you are typing it and then convert it into a you know language so that database can understand you know if you remember you know if you write a wrong syntax while writing your sql queries it will stop you there the query processor will stop you and let you know that you have some problem in the query please you know check for a syntax maybe you are not giving the right syntax so it will not you know process your query so query processor is a you know kind of a, you know translator or or you can say compiler is shown in in your words compiler that will understand your query and yes. convert into a database language so that you can interact with a database right let's say i i write you know select star from employee select star from employee so select is the keyword what i am writing it star is means all records from from is a keyword from where i'm giving a table name employee so query processor will understand that this person would like to see all data of a employee table so it will convert that request into a database language and database base will return a table a complete uh, table that will have all the records of the employee right sean yeah yes sir so i i hope na uh, the query processor uh, is clear to you now what is query processor yes sir yes it is okay next we have a, a runtime database manager database manager is a very simple you can easily answer it but if i add a word runtime it becomes different what is runtime uh, telvin do you understand anything here what is runtime runtime mm -hmm. Document is moving to one place to another. Mm, not not clearly, uh, Sean. Clearly. Uh, Sean. Yes. Uh, run time. Basically, it's the time, the process time it takes to gather the information. Okay, you you're saying it's a process time uh, takes by a system to gather the information. Yeah. To to so, get. Uh, the, 
up to certain point uh, let me tell you what is run time here you know you use there. your uh, debit card or a, or a credit card to go to a atm and you withdraw money right so the moment you insert your card the moment you insert your card in the machine the manager the run time manager will will become active so manager will become active and it will serve all your request at run time because right now you are in a particular session you insert your card you insert your pin number your session is active your session is active you need a run time manager to handle the session right so at run time you know the moment you are inserting a card and you are typing you are punching your uh, pin number you are in a session now in the session you have to perform certain task maybe you have to withdraw some money you you have to deposit some money you have to print your statement or you have to change your password the different actions you can perform it and these actions and these tasks are being supported by a database manager data database manager there and that moment of time database manager is called a runtime database manager because it's active that time do you understand shawn yes sir yes sir so runtime means the moment the database is active while you are in the transactioning uh, you know while you are you are transiting through your database you are in the process of doing something when you are in the process of doing something it becomes run time because it's active it's active and you are interacting with your database when you withdraw money then you know database manager job is to update your record database manager will inform further that we need to update the record of this customer this customer's uh, you know account number is this he is going to withdraw this money so we have to subtract this amount from his uh, balance amount from his uh, main account and you know show him the remaining balance so these actions these queries are being updated at run time and this is being handled by a database manager at run time is it clear to you sean and telvin yes yeah, sir it's now clear right so uh, next next we have a data manager so please pay attention here above we have database manager now we have data manager what is the difference between database and data shawn uh it the database it store the data yes so database stores data and what is data telvin data is like raw raw fact or it could be your information what right it's so yeah. yes so if we say data manager data manager is a kind of component or you know these these are the software components you cannot see physically what where is data manager located data manager is basically a software component so it's not uh, you know physically seen so data manager what what uh, data manager does it here data manager manage your data data manager will look after of your data so that it can be protected from any 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 you know unauthorized access or from any problem so data manager will take the backup of your data regularly data manager will you know fix the problems in the data data manager will properly store your data do you understand what i'm saying yes sir data manager is a broad sense and database manager is a, you know kind of a person that is dealing with a particular data at a time i will not say a person it's a, it's a software component it's a virtual uh, virtual manager you can say it's it's a it's not physical component these are the software components so runtime database manager is not a physical person i'm saying it it's it's a virtual assistant you can say that help you to interact with your database and now data manager yes 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 data manager is a big thing you know it, it's above uh, all uh, database manager so data manager is responsible for all, all data to be stored properly safely right in a, in a proper form and create a backup you know if sometimes we see you know you run your uh, you know query and suddenly in between it it's stuck you insert your card you type your pin you are going to withdraw your money and suddenly you know the transaction abort due to xyz reason or there is a power failure 
So if there's a power failure, what happened? Your money will be stuck there, right? And uh, your transaction is aborted. So in that case, database manager, the runtime database manager will update the data manager that this is what happened. You know, uh, that there is a power cut and uh, you know, the transaction is in between. So kindly revert it to the back. So data manager will revert the data to its previous state. Do you understand, Sean? Uh, Sean, am I audible to you? Uh, just a minute, let me think where is Sean. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So next we have data. Yes, sir, I'm hearing you. Okay, okay. Next we have data dictionary. Hello. Yes, yes, Hello. yes. Yes, you're audible now. Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, okay. Next we have data dictionary. Uh, data dictionary is a kind of, uh, you know, the data about data. So, Selvin, if you, if you say dictionary, what do you mean by dictionary in, in a simple layman language? It's like, it's like a structure of a database. Yes. No, what, what I'm asking, I'm asking a simple, uh, you know, layman language. What is dictionary? If you ask any, any children or any, anybody, what is dictionary, what they will reply? It's like something you could go to for retrieve information about the word. Yes. Yes. So dictionary tells uh, you the meaning about a particular yeah. word. So similarly, if we say data dictionary, data dictionary will you know, tell us the meaning of data we are storing in a database. So whatever the data we are storing in a database, when we, we, uh, you know, when, when we have to retrieve the meaning of data that what this particular field is, what is uh, why we are storing this data in a particular field, what are the conditions you imposed here? What are the parameters you set it here? So these definitions are stored in a data dictionary. So data dictionary will tell you the entire schema of your database and a table. So you have all the information about your database. You have all the information about your tables and uh, different columns. So where is the primary key? What is the limit and the size of a particular field? Maybe 10 characters or 20 characters. So you, all these informations are, are stored in a data dictionary. Right? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. Next we have report writer. Report writer is again a software component that is used to generate report automatically or sometimes, you know, you can customize your report, uh, you know, to for a specific uh, requirement. So report write, writer, what it does, it, it, it takes data from your tables. It first is connect to your database, then takes data from your table, then generate your report. Let's say your customer wants to see the information of all the customers who are investing your company with more than, uh, you know, hundred thousand dollars. So you have to put a condition that uh, the customer who is, uh, you know, investing more than hundred thousand dollars in uh, my company, then you will see the data. Then you will ask report writer to print this. So you can print your report in any format using Microsoft Access. You can print in a PDF format. You can print in a uh, Excel, Excel format, right? And you can also store, uh, you know, your report on, on a cloud using Microsoft OneDrive option. So you can save it uh, to a drive directly from your Access so that your manager from, can access it from there. So report writer is responsible for generating your report. And report with the help of report, you can generate different charts uh, automatically, right? Report also generates some charts automatically. That is the insight of your data. You have to see, you know, a data's insight because, you know, graphical information is more intuitive and, you know, it's more attractive. So what report writer does it, 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 it will create some kind of graphs for you, some charts so that your manager will be impressed and see and take data in a one go. Is this clear to you, Sean and uh, Telvin? Yeah. Yes, sir. Guys, if you have any problem, please do ask uh, here. Sure. Next, we have uh, different types of DBMS. Different types of DBMS. 
so here we we specified four different models of dbms system right and the first model is a hierarchical model in this model you know we it these are the basically the approach that you follow to store your data this is not something physically available on this is the concept uh telvin this is the concept this is not a, a software component and this is not a something that you can see it's the concept with the help of which you are uh, you know storing uh, your data it's a approach you can say yeah it's approach so hierarchical model what it says here it says you to store data in a hierarchical form uh let's say you have a company and uh, you want to store data about the cars you are manufacturing there is a big company and they are manufacturing different cars so what they they want they want to store the data and they they opt for a hierarchical model approach in that approach they will create one uh, table or a one entity called car and in the car they have some common features right that it become the parent uh, parent table or a main table then you will create sub tables out of that car you know i'll make one table for nissan micra i'll make one table for nissan different model and one table for nissan different model so there are different models for nissan car but all are the cars right and all have some common features so there is a one parent and you have many children to one parent shawn is this clear to you and telvin yes sir uh, so i i you saying yes let's go ahead so you saying is like a uh, one to many relationship yes 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 yeah. yes so you have one okay. car a parent car and you have many child to it okay so yeah That's so because nissan has the 10 or 20 models right but all models comes under a category called car and car has some common features car has four tires so every car of nissan will carry four tires right and it has four seats so every car will carry four seats so car is a main uh, parent uh, uh, entity or you can say parent table and out of that you have sub tables for nissan each model so this concept is called hierarchical model you have one parent but you have more than one child connected right uh, shawn is this clear to you i think shawn uh, is not reverting it's off yes maybe he is disconnected he is disconnected all right no problem so let, we will wait for him if if comes and he join uh, next telvin we have network model in network model there there could be possibility to have more than one parent in a network uh, model you will see more than one uh, parent right so you have uh, one you have many child and you have many par parents right uh, take an example of a network model uh, take an example of a student case you know so student id is available in a in a in a exam table and student id is also available in a in a you know course table right and similarly you know it is related to any other table so in network model you will find more than one parent of a single child teacher table will also contain a you know student information Elvin. Okay. Yes, sir, I'm here. Yes. Uh, next, we have a relational uh, model. In relational model, you have the relation established between two or more tables. That we studied yesterday's class. You know, we studied in the relational class. That yeah. when we connect different relation, it becomes a relational model. So, in hierarchical model, you have one parent, many children. In network model. 
you have more than one parent right yeah and in a relational model you have a relationship established between two or more entities right and okay. this is the most uh, commonly used types of dbms oh. right and next we have object oriented model object oriented model you know it's a it's a single it's based on an object so if i if i say car so all information about car will go to a one table only i will not create i will not create multiple tables for each model right i'll make a single table for one car and similarly if i have to store information about uh, tires so i'll make one table for tires all uh, you know data about tires will go to a tire table it could be for any of any of the model of the car right okay so that is object oriented so you will identify the objects about which you will store data okay sir right and afterwards uh, yes this is the creation of a database so that you can see in the slides you know it's quite easy that uh, you have done this before you can start ms access yeah. and create a database please practice this uh, at home and try to create a database uh, you can follow this uh, the steps here in the slides and do this yes, right and uh, please feel free to ask uh, questions in the queries if you have any and please don't forget to attempt the quiz today all right so please thank you uh, thank you so much for your time and efforts uh, you are giving every day and attending this class and it is very nice uh, to have you in the class thank you so much uh, telvin uh, yes sir no problem all right please do take care thank you